Well, uh, Sid Meyer, um, Senator Carr, the Foreign Minister, Heather, um, distinguished guests, guests and ladies and gentlemen, let me say that this is a huge honour for me and I feel very humble in receiving the Weary Dunlop Asia Medal for uh, 2012. And I, in doing so, um, let me not pay tribute to myself, but let me pay tribute to the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade um, for the huge support that it gave me through, what, three months short of 12 years. The tolerance of the officers of the department, the way I'd keep them up late at night on different uh, posts around the world, talking, 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 um, challenging them, arguing with them, the trouble I know that I would have put them to. And yes, Bob, my wife travelled with me incessantly and I think they always found me easier to deal with, by the way, when she travelled with me. So perhaps the Australian might like to run that little line. Um, but um, um, the department is a wonderful department. I've always said is one of the two most professional departments in the Australian government. And present here today is Philip Flood, who was the first secretary I had um, of the department for quite some years. And, uh, he stands as a monument to the professionalism and the efficiency of the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Well, as Heather said, um, Weary Dunlop means a lot to our family, not that I personally knew him, but he and my father had a very um, unhappy experience in Asia during the 1940s, from February 1942 until August 1945 in the Changi Prison of War Camp. And, my father came out of the Changi prison of war camp, which um, I, hope, I hope you'll all understand this, with a sense of bitterness towards the Japanese. And when he became a member of parliament in 1949, soon after that, the parliament voted on the Japan peace treaty and he voted against it. But what was interesting about him and our family was um, that uh, he was big enough. Um, somebody, some people say, you're only half the man your father was, and I say that's completely right. He was big enough to get over that setback, and when in 1957 the Menzies government put to the parliament the Australia-Japan Commerce Agreement, which I think is one of the most pivotal agreements Australia has signed in Asia, uh, my father voted for it after thinking long and hard about that. And fast forward to today in 2012, um, his, um, his granddaughter, my daughter, serves in the Australian Embassy in Tokyo. She speaks, I would say, fluent Japanese. Um, and her son, my grandson, my father's great-grandson, he was born in a hospital in Tokyo. So I think in, for the Downer family, the Asian experience is a growing and progressing uh, one. And certainly in my years as the Foreign Minister, as Bob finds in his time as the Foreign Minister, um, Asia was always front and centre of my daily work as it is his um, daily work. And it's true, I think back on uh, the huge events we had to deal with, the Asian economic crisis, the East Timor crisis, the um, transition from um, dictatorship to democracy in Indonesia, not to be underestimated as a, a pivotal moment in the region's modern history. Um, to uh, the rise of China, which was, I think, our fifth biggest trading partner when I became the foreign minister, our biggest by the time I finished, um, a country which you know all about, whose growth has been so spectacular, um, through to the emergence of regional institutions, and so the list goes on. Um, it was always fascinating, always very challenging, and behind it all I had a, had a, had a very simple view. Of course, like every Australian, I understand um, that given our geography, given our trade patterns, increasingly given our demographics as well, Australia is very much part of the Asian region um, and I, I, I enjoy that. But I um, was always of the view that if we really wanted to succeed in Asia, we had to be seen to be a contributor, not just a demandeur. We had to do more than say we would like to participate in this institution or that institution. We had to demonstrate to the region why it made such good sense for us to be involved. And I think over the years, and Bob Carr has listed quite a few examples of this in his speech, over the years we have been able to demonstrate that. I think one of the hardest things I had to do was to get Australia in as a founding member 
of the East Asia Summit. John Howard told me not to bother because the Singaporean Prime Minister had said you'll never make it. I said, just give me uh, six months and let me try. And there was a wonderful Deputy Secretary of the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade called Gillian Bird. I like to give credit where it's really due here. I was the boss, but she was the activist. Um, Gillian Bird went out with other officers of the department and got Australia into the East Asia Summit as a foundation member. I think the East Asia Summit will become the premier regional institution in the next 10 to 20 years. Um, and the fact that we're in there right at the beginning, I think is going to be very important to us in terms of our engagement with Asia. So, ladies and uh, gentlemen, it's a huge honour for me to have been presented with this uh, medal for 2012. I thank Asia Link very much for um, the great honour and I thank all the people uh, um, behind the scenes um, who have supported me over the years um, and have helped our diplomacy. Uh, not least, of course, my wife Nikki, who I repeat often travelled with me <laughs> and is travelling with me here today. Um, and my son Edward is here and my two, sis two of my sisters, I have three sisters, one is in America, um, two sisters, um, Stella and Una. I travelled here this morning from New York. I saw the Secretary General two days ago to talk about my current job, Cyprus, which is, by the way, in the Asia group, in the um, United Nations, curiously. We're in the European group, and Cyprus is in the Asia group. Work that one out. <laughs> the Secretary General is Korean, as you know, so we had a great um, time talking about our respective victories in the uh, Security Council elections. But today is, amongst other things, a great day for bipartisanship. Um, you haven't seen a lot of that in recent times, but this is a, a superb opportunity for us to be bipartisan and for me to congratulate the government um, and, and again the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade on the tremendous job they've done in getting us onto the Security Council. Thanks very much.